Chapter 10 of the Bobbsey Twins at Cherry Corners by Laura Lee Hope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Martha Heaton. Nick in a Tree. Mr. Bobbsey also seemed much interested in hearing the name of Nick Dodge, for he remembered that his wife and Bert had told about the unpleasant peddler boy who had tried to make trouble for Bert. "'How did you hear about this Dodge lad, Mr. Tansy?' asked Mr. Bobbsey. "'Oh, there's an employment agency in Lakeport. That's where you live, I hear. There's an agency there where we farmers write to get help. Men and boys who want to go about the country picking cherries, helping get in hay and the like of that, send their names to the office, or else they go there, find out what farmers need help, and then write for jobs.' I got a lot of letters from men and boys who wanted to pick my cherries, and there was one from this Nick Dodge. But as I say, I have all the pickers I need, so you can have this Nick if you want him. Better think about it, said Mrs. Bobbsey in a low voice to her husband as she heard this talk. It might not be the same boy who made trouble for Bert, but again, it might be. I'd wait and find out for sure." I will, answered the children's father, and he said to Mr. Tansy, Thanks, but I'll wait a while. My cherries don't ripen as soon as yours, so I will have time enough. Yes, agreed the farmer, you will, and when it comes time for your cherries to be picked, you'll be swamped by a crowd of pickers from around here. You won't have any trouble even if you don't hire this Nick Dodge. I'll just write back and say I don't need him. By this time, Mrs. Bobbsey, with the help of Nan, Bert, and Dinah, had about emptied the auto of the baggage and other things brought to Redgate Farm. Of course, the first thing Bert did was to get his dog out of the crate and tie Snap securely to a post in the shade with plenty of cool water. Flossie and Freddie played about near their pet, talking to him, and very likely Snap soon felt quite at home. After all, it did not much matter to him where he was, as long as the children were around him. Mr. Bobbsey remained a little longer talking to Mr. Tansy and finding out about the other two farms at Cherry Corners. You remember there were four, which, meeting at a place where two roads crossed, made the corners. Mr. Bobbsey owned one of the farms, Red Gate, and diagonally across from him, or Kitty Corner, as Flossie called it, was Mr. Tansy's place. The other farms were owned by a Mr. Winton and a Mr. Searle. "'Well, how is everything?' asked Mr. Bobbsey of his wife and the children as he walked over near where the now-empty car was parked. "'All right,' answered Mrs. Bobbsey. "'Dinah is inside getting supper.' "'It's lovely here,' said Nan. "'We can have lots of fun.' "'Where is the place where I can go fishing?' asked Bert, who had brought along a rod and quite a collection of hooks and lines. "'I don't just know,' his father answered. "'This place is a bit strange to me. I haven't owned it long. Perhaps Mr. Tayson can tell you.' And he looked at the elderly man who had been engaged as a caretaker. "'There's a little river about half a mile down the road,' was the answer. "'I'll show you tomorrow.' "'And where are all the cows, chickens, and horses, and sheep, and things like that?' asked Flossie, who loved animals. "'There isn't much stock on Redgate,' her father told her. "'When I took over the farm, I knew I wouldn't have time to bother with horses and cows, so I let them be sold. "'But we have some chickens, I believe,' and he looked a question at Mr. Tayson. "'Yes, there's quite a flock of hens,' was the answer." But if the children like cows and horses and such animals, they'll find plenty on the other three farms. And this turned out to be true. If there are any fires that need putting out, I'll do it, Freddie Bobbsey called to Mr. Tayson as the latter was leaving, having now turned the farm and house over to Mr. Bobbsey. Oh, you put out fires, do you? asked the caretaker with a laugh. I have my engine, went on the little fellow and proudly he showed his toy, having already filled the tank with water from the kitchen sink and wound up the spring that worked the pump. "'Look at it squirt!' cried Freddy. "'That's a noble engine,' declared Mr. Tayson. "'If I see any fires, I'll let you know.' And the little chap was quite pleased at hearing this. The quaint, old-fashioned home 
that went with Redgate Farm was furnished with everything needed to keep house, and Dinah, though she said the kitchen was not nearly so good as the one at home, admitted that it would do very well. I'll soon have something to eat for my honey lambs, she said, meaning the children. They can't be very hungry, remarked their mother. It seems to me they did nothing but eat all the way here, and we were a long while on the road. I'm hungry, admitted Bert, and as the others said the same thing, Dinah knew she need not fear any of her cooking going to waste. It did not take long to get settled in the old house, and after supper the family roamed about the place, noting how many cherry trees there were. The children were eager to pick some to eat, but Mr. Bobbsey would not allow this, as there were only one or two trees where the fruit was just beginning to turn red. We'll have plenty of cherries a little later, he said, and if we need any to eat before then, we can get some from either of the other three farms. I'd like to get some for a cherry pie, said Mrs. Bobbsey. Oh, could I make a pie, begged Nan, and her mother said she might. Can I feed the chickens, begged Flossie. Freddie, hearing this, also pleaded to be allowed to help. That's so. The chickens, exclaimed Mr. Bobbsey. I almost forgot about them. They ought to have been fed before this. But when the whole family went out to the hen house, they found the fowls had gone to roost. And looking in the door, the children saw the feathered creatures huddled on the roost, some with heads under their wings. I hope they didn't go to bed hungry, said Mr. Bobbsey. Just then, a young man who seemed to be a hired man on one of the adjoining farms passed down the road near the hen houses, and seeing the Bobbsey family, he called, Are you wondering about your hens? Yes, replied the children's father. I was saying I hoped they had been fed. They were, said the hired man. I saw Mr. Tayson scattering grain to them just before you arrived. Oh, thank you. Then they're all right, Mr. Bobbsey remarked, and to the children, he said, looking at Bert particularly, I shall give you four charge of the chickens. You must feed them and gather the eggs. That will be fun, exclaimed Nan. I'm going to gather eggs, declared Flossie. Well, don't fall in them the way you did once, begged Bert with a laugh, remembering something that had happened at Meadow Brook. There was too much to see at Redgate to permit all of it being viewed in one evening, and when it grew dark, Mrs. Bobbsey insisted that Freddie and Flossie should go to bed, as they were tired with the day's travel. Nan and Bert were allowed to remain up a little longer, but soon the old farmhouse was quiet, and all were asleep save Snap, who roved about, making sure that those he guarded would come to no harm in the night. By daylight the farm looked even more pleasing than it had in the evening, and Mrs. Bobbsey was sure it would prove a wonderful place to spend the summer. Mr. Bobbsey went off after breakfast to inquire about selling his cherries when they should ripen, for the crop would have to be sent to a distant city to be disposed of. In spite of what their father had said about there being as yet no ripe cherries at Red Gate, the Bobbsey twins, hoping against hope, visited tree after tree. Though nearly every one was laden, still none was fit to be picked. However, Mrs. Bobbsey, who received an early call from Mrs. Tansy, solved the problem, for she said, Children, Mr. Tansy has a tree of early cherries, and he will let you have some to eat. Oh, hooray, cried Bert. Could I make a pie? asked Nan. You may have all the cherries you need for pies, said Mrs. Tansy with a laugh. A little later, when the children had eaten as much of the delicious fruit as was good for them, Nan made her pie. She really did very well, for her mother and Dinah had taught her something about kitchen work, and though the fat black cook kept a watchful eye over the baking of the pastry, Nan did most of the work herself. And it's a lovely pie, exclaimed her father, as he ate some at supper that night. Nan blushed with pleasure. All that day the Bobbsey twins had played around cherry corners, and Bert went fishing but caught nothing. However, this did not discourage him. You sort of have to get acquainted with the fish in a new place, he said. When night came, the children were ready for bed, but they were up bright and early the next morning. 
However, if the children were bright, the weather was just the opposite, for it rained. But there was a big attic in the farmhouse, and going up there, the twins found plenty with which to amuse themselves. There were some bound magazines, some story books, some strings of sleigh bells from the days of old, before automobiles were invented, and a lot of old soldier clothes that, so Mr. Bobbsey said, had belonged to the son of the man from whom he had bought the place. So the rainy day passed pleasantly in the attic, and the sun came out the next day which made everything all right. Even though it had rained, the children kept to their task of feeding the chickens, and Flossie and Freddie were delighted when they were allowed to carry in about a dozen eggs, which Dinah put carefully away. Two or three more days passed, and on each one the warm sun brought nearer to ripeness the cherries on the trees at Redgate. But it would yet be a full week before any were ready to pick. However, some of the early fruit on the other farms was being gathered, and several men and boys had been hired as pickers. Seeing them busy in the trees, Bert said to his father, Do you think, Daddy, I could hire out to Mr. Tansy or one of the other cherry farms and pick cherries until ours are ripe? Well, I hardly think it would be worth while, was the answer. You couldn't pick fast enough to make it an object for any of the other farmers to hire you, and you will soon be busy here. But if you like, you may go over to some of the other places and watch in order to learn how cherries are picked. That'll be fun, decided Bert. Come on, Nan. You'll want to learn, too. We'll both pick when our cherries are ripe. Flossie and Freddie had gone on a little picnic with their mother, which left Nan and Bert free to go where they pleased. So they strolled across the road and down a lane that led to the farm and cherry orchard of Mr. Winton. He had the most early cherries of any of the four corner properties. Up in the trees, or standing on ladders thrust up into them, were a number of men and boys. As Bert and Nan passed under one tree, Meanwhile, looking about and seeing how the fruit was gathered and put into baskets, Bert heard an exclamation. It came from a tree under which he and his sister were standing, an exclamation of surprise, and Bert, looking up, was himself surprised, for he saw in the tree Nick Dodge, who was filling a pail with red cherries. "'There he is, Nan,' said Bert in a low voice. "'Who?' Nick Dodge, the boy who was going to fight me because he backed into my bicycle. He's up here, at Cherry Corners. From his tree, Nick looked down at Bert Bobsey. End of chapter 10 Read by Martha Heaton September 2023